the Lord of God is to us. What nation? What people is there in all of creation that are so blessed as we are blessed to have judgments, statutes, testimonies? To have the word of God close to it as we are. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, if you look at your Bible, it says Holy Bible. This is a holy word. And you are a holy nation. The Bible says you are a holy nation. You are a holy nation. To be holy means to be set apart. That's what it means to be holy. It means to be set apart. It means to be consecrated. God has set you apart from all.
Hallelujah. The best known unto God is to ask, is to ask, is to ask. Whenever we come together, you know, as our faces differ, so do our needs differ. So do our requests differ. So does our asking differ. Why it says in his presence there's fullness of joy is because when two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. I'm here to tell you this morning that God is here this morning and he's here to answer your prayers. It's a prayer answering God. Amen. God shivered me up along, along the lines of soul on high by divine freedom. And that's the title of my message, is that you were meant to soar on high by divine favor. You were purposed to soar on high. What souls? An eagle souls. On high. It's far about the challenges of life. Hallelujah. Go to me quickly to the book of Psalms. When we start there as a foundation, Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter number five. When you there, you say amen. Psalms chapter five. Praise God. And I want you to read verse number twelve at the top of your voice. Are you there? Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, verse 12. I'd like you, if you could, highlight it, underline it, embed it in your heart. Confess it over your life daily. You with me? This particular verse, it is a verse I want you to embed in your heart. It's this particular verse. Because I do not want you to forget this. Tell your neighbor, do not forget this. Do not forget this. Amen. This is wisdom. It's wisdom. Now Psalm 5 verse 12, the count of three at the top of your voice is one, two, three. Read one more time. It says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Favor. Is your shield. You are surrounded. To be surrounded means to be encompassed about with favor. That means that every time you make this favor, favor is that divine influence which God exerts upon the hearts of his people, upon their lives, that causes it brings about supernatural change and divine happiness. But when you look at it, all you can say is, it is God. It causes men to wonder. The Passion Translation says this, Lord, how wonderfully you bless the righteous. How wonderfully you bless the righteous. Your favor wraps around each one. Wow! It's kind of like a coat of many colors. Your favor wraps around each one and covers them under your canopy of kindness and joy. Hallelujah! You are covered. So, do you remember when Moses says, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my bear, my cat. Do you understand that? God wraps you with favor and he covers you 
with his kindness and joy. Amen. Praise God. Now I want to share with you this morning. You know the month of March. If you look at the Jewish calendar, the Jewish calendar, the month of March is known as the month of Adar. A D A R, the month of Adar. And in this month of Adar, they celebrate on the 14th to the 15th day of the month of Adar. They celebrate a festival which is the Feast of Purim. P U R I M. It's the Feast of Purim. And this year they celebrate it on the 16th and the 17th, which is kind of like in this week. You understand? So on our calendar is the 16th and the 17th. On their calendar is the 14th and the 15th. But this very week, they prepare to celebrate the month of Purim. And that month of Purim it is a celebration where they commemorate what God did for the nation of Israel. What God did for the nation of Israel through the life of Queen Esther. So that's my whole work for you this morning. So if you came to church this morning, praise God, you chose the right day. You've got whole work going to study the book of Esther. I want you to meditate on that book. Read it. And just see how God works in the lives of His people. And this is what the Jews do every year. The 14th and 15th month of Adar, they celebrate the Feast of Purim and they celebrate what God worked in the life of Esther. They also celebrate how God saved the Jews. You remember from Haman. Haman plotted against the Jews. In the Persian Empire, he had a plot against the Jews. His plan was to wipe them out. But praise God, God had another plan. God had another plan. So, oh Jesus, I just feel my spirit this week. You choose. It's a, this, this is an individual choice now. You're going to choose three days this week that you're going to fast and pray. I'm not going to tell you when, how, when. It's between you and God. Because you remember what, what happened when Haman brought that apart. Or Esther and my uncle Mordecai and all of Israel and all the Jewish nation, they came together and they fasted and they prayed and God came through. So I'm going to tell you, I just said to my spirit that God is coming through. The same thing that God did in the life of Esther, God is going to do in the life of his people. Talk to me, somebody. When you go to the book of Esther, you find in chapter 1 and chapter 2, you find the king. The king then. He had over 127 provinces. From India through to Ethiopia, all those provinces, the king ruled over. And the king had a celebration. You remember the story, he had a celebration. A six month celebration. We find that whilst the king was having his celebration, we find that his dead wife, Vashti, we Vashti, she had her own part. Okay. And then, when the days had gone on, about the seventh day, the king sent forth his eunuchs to go and tell Queen Vashti to come and join in the celebration. And Vashti refused. And then what happened? Vashti was replaced. Oh, Jesus. Vashti was replaced. Then they brought all the maidens in all the land. They brought them all. And they prepared them for the king. And there's one Jewish girl, an orphan. Esther. Who was brought in. And we find how God gave Esther, preferential treatment. I see right now God bringing preferential.
preferential treatment to you. Yeah. Your workplace preferential treatment. People will even say, how come they treat you? It's preferential treatment. God gave her favor. Esther became rich to overwash his place. So, in your workplace, have you ever heard, come on, in your workplace, you know what I'm talking about. I'm also in secular employment. I know what happens there. You get some arrogant people. Those who say, let me leave and we'll see what happens. The ones who say, yeah, when I move off sick, nothing happens in this place. You ever heard that? Huh? You get it. If I do not see nothing on them, I want to show them. I want to show them. When they get angry and they say, I'm going to resign, I'm going to leave this place and we'll see nothing on the person. Before you got there, the place was in operating. When you leave, it will still be operating. I'm going to show him, I'm going to leave. You say, well, go ahead and make the space for someone else. Because that's what it is. I mean, when you read the Bible, the Bible tells us that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Vashti became prideful. Esther was humble. God did not wash him, and he elevated Esther. So there is a Vashti that's about to make place for somebody. Yes. Oh, yes. I have the wrong place. Yes. I mean, you know, if I was a boy, I would say, thank you, Lord, Vashti making place for me. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. There's a Vashti that's making room for you. All this time you'll be saying, how's this thing going to happen? You know, when is it going to happen? I'm here to tell you, just go and study the book of Esther and you'll see exactly what's happening. You don't need to understand it, but it's happening, praise God. Because if you look at the story of the life of Esther, it is an account of divine elevation and favor. And the Bible says God does not change. What he did for Esther, he'll do for you. You can tell me that's why I said to you, it's a change of story for you today. Because today marks a change in your story. Because from today, there'll be a divine lifting. There'll be a divine shifting. This divine elevation that's coming to you. And this favor that is waiting forth upon you. We study the book of Esther, we, we, we see how this account of Esther's life it exemplifies how God can give someone a sudden flight of destiny. You remember two weeks ago, I ministered to you about suddenly. The God of suddenness. When favor hits your life, when favor comes upon a man or a woman, it gives him a sudden flight of destiny. It takes them from the downhill and sets them amongst the princes of his people. We see from the pit to Potiphar's house, from the prison to the palace. Look at Esther, a nobody to a somebody. This is the God that we serve, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And when you look at it, this, this supernatural flight, it's a supernatural, why I say, listen, how many of you know you've been on a plane? What I pray for grace upon this church. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lord, we need more plane tickets in this house. Because <laughs> people fly, Lord, and they fly about the clouds. Yes, Lord, we pray for it. Do you think it's just, you know, maybe you should do yourself a favor the next time you join with them. Just, just say, I'm going to book a flight. You know, just for, listen, you understand, just to get, just to get a feel. 
Take a flight from Togo to Germany. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. But just book a flight. Please do that. And then you say it's the beginning of May. I don't know why I'm saying that. You know, last time I said something similar, we found people were flying overseas. Some went to Morocco, some went to China. Listen, I'm telling you, just do what You know, flying is better than driving and walking. It is, really, it is. It's faster, it's more comfortable. We enjoy the ride, we enjoy the food. There's so much to enjoy. Why I'm speaking about supernatural flight, listen, when you get into a plane, they give you, you know, all the instructions, buckle up, get ready, tell you, you know, and just prepare for the flight, prepare for takeoff. And once you take off, you, you feel that, you know, you can feel it, there's a lifting. That's why I'm telling you now that wherever you are, the angels of God, are already there. The Holy Spirit is there. He's there to come out, talk to me, to lead you. He's gonna, he's gonna take you there. You're not gonna crash now. It means wherever you find yourself in, whatever mess you find yourself in, there's a flight that you can book and you can take right now. I mean, you look throughout the world, whenever there's something that happens, we just look at, look at what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. How many people, as soon as the, you know, the news came, the word came, those who could grab flights were grabbing flights. Because they do now, once you take that flight and you cross of that territory, you cross those, you understand, you cross those borders, you are safe. And right now where you are, call on the Lord your God. God wants you to call on Him. As you call on Him, you give everything to Him. God says, now you relax and watch how His favor will cause you to have supernatural flights. In other words, there will be supernatural lifting. That you no longer look at your mess, but you'll see your mess from above. And you see, you know, you understand, once you're above, it gives you more clarity. And you see how the little things that you were worried about are really not so big as you thought. Come on, somebody. Come on. Because, you know, you can look at a building, it looks huge, it looks massive. But just look at it and bounce you in the sky. It looks small. It looks like Lego Land. It looks like Lego Land. It does. It looks like Lego Land. And you look at it and say, my goodness, it looks so small. So you see, all those things that you consider to be mountains, they're not mountains. They're just low hills. Sometimes you face the mold hill and you, you, you understand, you, you think you see a mountain, but you just become as blind as that mold. You can't see the size of it. It's small. But God says He's giving you right now favor to lift you up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this year, 2022, it is in the agenda of God for divine favor to be part of his plan for your life. You must understand that. And yes, we are living in the last days and we see it. We see the stages set. We see all these things coming together. It's the last days, but these last days, it's an era of supernatural favor for the body of Christ. This is an era, it's an era, it's a, it's, 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 it's a dawning of a new era for the church. The supernatural favor, there's things that are happening in the body of Christ. The people out there in the world are beginning to wonder what is happening. No, God is working 
and the lives of his people by his favor. We are in a time of, un of an unusual release of supernatural favor. Unusual release. That's why I've noticed once of uncommon favor. Do you remember that? Uncommon favor. Now, yes, yeah, unusual. It is, it is not the norm. It's above the norm. It is not ordinary, it is extraordinary. Unusual. It's an unusual release of favor. And every bond, every bond who is divinely connected to God is meant to enjoy the covering of God's favor. You are divinely connected to Him. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you are connected to Him. Come and talk to me, somebody. The blood of Jesus has given you a connection for life. It's not like, listen, it's not like Vodacom and MTN, Telco, and Cell C. No, I don't know what network it is, but it's not like the mobile network. The mobile network, once you stop putting in air time, you try after a certain period of time to replenish that air time. You find that number is no more yours. Hello? Come on, somebody. You ever had someone phone you or speak and say, I tried phoning you, someone else answered your phone. Because that SIM card was not the connection for life. Jesus has given you a lifetime connection. You are divinely connected to God. It's like when people ask, you know, when they want, you know, maybe to get a business contract or they want to get in somewhere or a job, they ask, do you have any connections there? I mean, that's a South African language. Come on. Have you got a connection? Come on, have you got a connection? In the South Africans, we shake hands like this. Our connection. Say, bro, God is my connection. God is on the inside. Come on, somebody. Can you, can you trust God? What are you trusting God for? Maybe it is, you know, a bond for your home. Maybe they may have rejected it before, but you just say, I have a divine connection on the inside. God is going to move somebody's hand there. Do you remember the story I told you of the woman that was released from prison by mistake? And only after they released, they, they, they found out that they made a mistake. Do you remember that? So God can cause somebody in the bank to make a mistake that by the time they realize a mistake, the deed, the title, so they can go name and move in the house. It's too late now. It's too late. Come on, remember there's a song, Too Late for Mama. Hmm? It's too late now. You've already paid the first payment on the bonds. It's too late now. You're there now. You're occupied now. Come on, somebody. Or oh, maybe it's for a car, finance for a car. It's too late now. You pay the first installment. You, you, come on, you're driving it now. Jesus. Can you trust God? For favor. For supernatural mistakes. You probably worry you haven't paid SARS how long. I once heard a testimony of a brother, you know, he says he was driving and the traffic official stopped him and uh, when he had his license, now his license, he then remembered the day he had to renew his license. I mean, he didn't, he wasn't speeding or anything, he went to the road. The road. The traffic officer stopped him. And when he looked at his license, he saw that, you know, it had expired, he had to renew it. 
And he, he says he didn't know what to do. He just closed his eyes, he handed it to the officer, and he said he began to pray. He says, Lord Jesus, you open the blind eyes to see, cause seeing eyes not to see. <laughs> and he says, the traffic officer came back, gave him his license, and said, have a good day. He said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Favor 
the seed of, of one individual. And I see favor singling you out this morning. The favor of God singling you out. But amongst all your kindred, amongst all the people of the earth, they didn't know about Sunny until favor came upon Sunny. They didn't know about Ashley until favor came upon her. They didn't know about Eddie until favor came upon him. They didn't know about Phyllis until favor came upon him. They didn't know about Jeffrey until favor. Look, it's a favor located you. And once favor locates you, man. Kimara becomes your testimony. Hallelujah. Go with me to the book of Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Babu, Shian, Rafa, Sebaha. Boba, Bakia, Sebo, Rusha. There are things that you are trusting God for. There are things that God has promised you that you need to take possession of. And I'm going to give you the secret to taking possession of the land, taking possession of that which God has promised you. The book of Psalms 44 and verse number 3 says this, For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did they did their own arm save them, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. We sang that song this morning. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon. Because his countenance, because of his countenance, God is looking upon you. And just by the, you see, your divine connection with God, God is constantly watching over you. Remember, you are a word from God. Remember what God said to the prophet. He said, What do you see? He says, I see an elbow tree. He says, Yes, you see the right. By watching over my words to my thoughts. I understand this. When you do not have a word in you, what do you have that God can watch over? You know what I'm saying? Did you get that? When you do not have a word from God in you, not as if your void empty of God's word. God cannot watch over something that's not His. Because what you have, if you do not have His Word, that means you do not have faith. Remember, God is a faith responsive God. He responds to faith. The opposite of faith is fear. And how does fear come about? Fear comes about by doubt, by suggestion. Words that are contrary to scripture, words that are contrary to what God has said. Tell you all, man, you're going to die. Man, you're never going to make it. Man, it's the end. It's not the end. When God showed me, He showed me what He's going to give me, what He's going to do in my life. And then he gave me a word which says, I am the Lord your God, declare the end from the beginning. So in the beginning when I showed you, God is saying, I already declared the end. So in between, as I'm journeying towards the end, nobody can come and tell me it's the end because I got a glimpse of the end in the beginning. <laughs> I don't know if you got that. If you haven't watched next week, I'm hearing what I'm saying. Because when you have this word, it doesn't matter, come what may, God is watching over his word to perform it. 
Hallelujah. We just read Psalm 44 verse 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance, because you had favor unto them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you will take over the land not by your labor, but by faith. You will take over the land not by your labor, but by favor. And understand this. I am not saying do nothing about it. The Bible says a lazy man shall not eat. So don't be lazy, lazy. You do your part, you need the rest for God. Come on, somebody. You take over the land, not by your labor, but by faith. What I want you to remember is that it is the favor upon a man's life that determines the quality of his life. It is the favor upon your life that will determine the quality of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look at the nation of Israel, when they were making the Exodus, God gave them favor in the sight of the Egyptians. In Exodus 3 21, the Lord said to Moses, Now I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. Forget about the people in your workplace that are telling you that, listen, the pension is not enough. The pension you're not going to make ends meet. Nothing is going to work out. Listen, yes, you are in your workplace, but you do not belong to the economy of South Africa, nor the economy of this world. You belong to the economy of God, and God is in control. God is working on your pension. Listen, the Bible says here, God said, I will give them favor, and it shall come to pass. When you go, you shall not go empty. You shall not go empty. I mean, the Bible says, when the Israelites left Egypt, they planted them. They planted them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You shall not go empty. Could even be in your school, in your education, in your academics. But you will leave your school Loved it with knowledge. God will give you so much favor in your school that teachers will just go the extra mile just for you. You know, if you're in varsity, lecturers will go the extra mile just for you. Come on. If you come on, if you're in business, people that are in business will come on, somebody will go the extra. How about this one, Sister Ashley? When you know you sign up a contract or sign up something for your business, come on, Kimara. I hear what I'm saying is that the person looks and says, Man, how many people here are in, you know, you got your own business or you can do? Just got something on your own new start. Okay, Jimmy, Ashley. Come on. Now let me tell you something. You know, when there's tenders that are coming and contracts that are coming, trust God for such favor that what was not given in the contract will be given to you. Mm. You're not getting this. You know, even if it's employment, the employment contract, what was not even in the employment contracts comes just for you. In other words, you know, unexpected bonuses. I think I'm in the wrong place this morning. Unexpected bonuses. That was never even in the contract. All of a sudden, bonus schemes are coming out. You understand, rewards are coming out just for you. Just 
songs. God can do that. Since you shall not go empty. You must understand that God is committed to giving his people favor because he knows without favor his people will labor and they will labor in vain. But what favor can do in a single moment, it will do more than a lifetime of labor to ever to talk to me, somebody. We are privileged by redemption to be his people. And because of that now, God is committed to giving you favor. And because of redemption, I'm here to tell you, you are entitled to divine favor. There's nothing the enemy can do about it. You are entitled to divine favor. Things may not be working out for other business people or for other employees, but things are working out for you because of divine favor. God will give you favor. If you've got a shop, people will pass every other shop, but they walk into your shop because of favor. Hallelujah. You, did you know, did you know that favor was the identity of Jesus and the early church? If you look in Luke's gospel, say Luke's gospel, chapter number 2 and verse 52, the Bible says that Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Favor was his identity. The early church in the book of Acts 2 47, the Bible says the disciples were praising God and having favor with all the people. They had favor with all the people. And the Lord added daily to the church such as should be saved. Favor is what will come on, attract people to the kingdom of God because they'll see that there's a God who favors his people. Understand that our God is a good God. Our God is not like the God of the other nations. People, come and talk to me, somebody. There are people, religious people have this mentality that God, you know, God will punish you. And God will da 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 All these negative things about God. But when you read the scriptures and you read the gospels and you see how God reveals himself through his son, Jesus Christ, you see how God is. You see how gracious this God is. You see how merciful this God is. You see how full of love this God is. Because the entire Bible is summed up in one word. The law and the prophets are summed up in one word. And that is the word of love. And the Bible tells us that God is love. We serve a love God. A God who loves his people. Hallelujah. So when all the other people look at you and say, how is, it, how is this happening in your life? You tell them, it's because of the God I serve. He has favored me. God's favor is upon me. Talk to me, somebody. In this season, we are in church. I'm going to tell you this morning that favor is your identity. Favor is your divine identity. I mean, if someone asks you for your ID, what's your ID? Your identity document. Not so. And you give them one. What will you give them? You show them your ID card. That's my identity. That's who I am. I'm here to tell you that you have divine identity, and that is favor. You're going to see it. How favor, when favor is your identity, it causes you to be recognized. And listen, Favor. People you didn't even know will be celebrating you. People you didn't even know will be coming looking for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must understand that yes, favor is a mystery. It is a mystery. Why it's a mystery is because it can never be orchestrated by human efforts. Favor can never be orchestrated by human effort. Because a man of power may do the labor, but a man of favor will reap the harvest. So 
all for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know, Brother Jeff, you know, when God calls you to do your own thing, calls you to take a step of faith, Brother Eddie, Brother Stephen, you, you know, when God calls you to do your own thing, to take a step of faith, Brother Kim, Brother Marlon, Brother Paul, Brother Jimmy, Brother Felix, Brother Simon, you know, I'm just speaking to brothers, but I'm speaking to everybody, but, you know, do not can hold this against me. You know, when God asks you to take that step of faith and start something that is impressed upon your heart and it's a vision and it's a goal. And very often what happens is we become like the man of God who, who started, you know, arguing his case with God, but God, I am illiterate. Uh, God, you understand, remember, you know, God, I cannot speak, remember Moses, I cannot speak, I'm stuttering. You understand? You become like a prophet. God, I'm still young. Oh, God, I'm too old now, God. I'm already in my 70s now, God. I mean, you know what, 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 what really hurts me the most in my heart is when you find someone at the age of 30 or 40 or 50 and uh, you know you try to encourage them and they say but I'm too old for that now and th you know what I love telling them is oh praise God you pensioner I'm still living I'm still living I'm still living I'm not too old for anything my youth is renewed as the eagle so my ultimate page, my inner man is renewed daily, I'm still young and hard I'm like Caleb, talk to me somebody. I'm like Caleb, we've come out of Egypt many moons ago, but I'm still as young as the day when I left Egypt. Because God renews my strength. You see, when God calls you to take that step of faith, we're always looking for excuses. And, we, and very often, very often, you look around you and you consider, wow, there's even enterprises that are bigger than me. They're not starting. Where am I getting involved? Let me tell you something. Those enterprises were started by men of power. But you are a man of favor. So a man of favor does not do the labor. He leaves the labor to a man of power. Because favor, a man of favor, only enters into the labor of others to reap the harvest. So others have been bringing the work for you. Have you ever seen how they harvest the big tractor that goes in the fields and it's just harvesting and it's just... Can you see yourself that way this morning? Can you see that the people have done the labor for you and you're just going there and you're reaping? Come on, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. We just pray that in the word of God, how God blesses the righteous, how wonderfully he blesses the righteous, the wealth
individual who makes praise his or her lifestyle will never run out of freedom. You'll never run out of freedom. Because you're always praising. But a person who's always moaning, groaning, complaining will have nothing to show. But when once, once you praise, become a praiser. When it's good or when it's bad, you praise God. You praise God in the middle of the month too when your bank account is on minus. Because you'll be surprised how those times when your bank account is a minus and you're praising God, God says, that's my child, that's my child. My child has faith that I am a child, I am a provider. I will provide over and above that salary that's going to come at the end of the month. You are not, never meant to live your life from paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. No, you are meant to live your life out of God's sufficiency. Hallelujah. When praise becomes your lifestyle, favor automatically becomes your story. Favor becomes your story. And once favor is your story, oh boy, you begin to shine. You begin to shine. Remember, Jesus said, let your light so shine that men will see your deeds. Glorify your Father who is in heaven. People look at you and say, listen, this person was nobody yesterday. This person was barely making ends meet. But look what the Lord has done. You see, some of you, you've got unsafe family. You're fighting with them to be saved. You don't need to fight with them to be saved. Favor will get them saved. When they see the favor of God on your life, they'll say, how come? And you say, let me tell you about this Jesus. You see this Jesus I've been talking to everybody about all these years. Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you where he took me from. Let me tell you how many things he took. Let me tell you, when you, you know, you understand, when I came to a place and I saw that there was no way to it, and he just automatically, he made a door when there's no door. You know what, I didn't even go to a door. I walked to a wall. There was a limitation, but it took me beyond the limitation. Come on, talk to me, somebody. There was a time when I had nothing, but he just came to my aid and he said, come on, talk to me. There was a time. And I didn't know which way to turn. And he came and he carried me on eagle's wings. I saw it from above. I didn't even see it. I come on, talk to me. I went through the fiery furnace. You understand what I'm saying? I went through the fiery furnace, but nothing played me. I come on, I came out on the other side. I was trying to in the fire, but I came out as gold. That's how when you look at me today, I'm shining with the glory of God. Brother G, 
if the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So you see, brothers, it's important you get married because without marriage, you cannot have favor. Don't fight with me, go and fight with the altar of the church. He said, listen, he says, he who finds a wife, finds a good and obtains favor from the Lord. Come on. Come on, brothers. You must say, I have favor of the Lord. God gives you favor because remember, why he favors you is because as a man, you're supposed to be able to provide a roof for your family. You're supposed to be able to provide food on the table to nurture your family. That God gives you that favor to sustain your home. But without that favor, the home cannot say it. Come on, somebody. Some of you are looking at me square. Don't fight with the water. Please, don't fight with me. The water is there. God is there. That's what God says. Faithful. You know, brother, yes, you may be single now. Praise God. You're still favor of God. But the day you get married, the special favor that comes. <laughs> and from that day, if you go to what you say, I found a good thing.
Oh God, be stronger than ever before. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We give you thanks and praise and we give you glory and honor and we give you worship, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God. And yes, O Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, the vows, O Lord, that we have made. Lord God, our marriages. Many of us have, you know, we've been so accustomed with vows. The vows that have been passed down from tradition. And, you know, we find those vows for richer or poorer, for better or worse, in sickness and in health. God, God is a consistent God. He's not a God of up and down. Today it's all good, tomorrow is bad. No, he's consistently good. And he's constantly good. So therefore, Lord, when we've spoken those vows and we've made them, because your word says it is better not to vow than to vow. And many of us have made those vows, Father God, with sickness, with poverty, with worse. But your word says that marriage, marriage is wonderful. It's a gift of God. It is holy. It is sanctified of you. It is glorious, O God. And therefore, Lord God, we thank you that we bow ourselves to your word of healing. That we are the healed of God, keeping sickness away. As couples, we will pray sickness away. We will keep it at bay because we are the healed of the Lord. And as couples, oh Lord God, we are the rich. We have been enriched with every good thing that comes from you. Hence, we are the rich, the wealthy, keeping poverty and lack at bay, oh God, working together as a couple and praying together as a couple, and spreading the word of God together that we become prosperous in all things. Hence, oh Lord God, we are not in the worst, but we are in the best for you, giving us the best, giving us the best house that we have.
We pray all. 